I love how you have the speech bubble artwork behind you. Yeah, I'm trying to hack it so I can send text to it. To... I'll make that. Oh, deal. <laughs> we'll do a trade. I will commission you. <laughs> Welcome back to Art and Technology. Today we'll join pioneer Scott Fisher and artist Rachel Rawson to talk about the future of VR. There's a hope that we can get to some like big conceptual questions about the future. We'll see what we can do. When I think about the future, which I always like hesitate to talk too much about, but I do think about Neuralink and the way that technology is going to begin to move into the body. So we have right now, we have perception that's sort of assisted by an outside peripheral, something like a headset. But my concern is this blurry space between where technology begins to move. It's moving into our, our psyche and our psychology, but I start to wonder when it begins to move into our body. Yeah, I think that that will probably become more literal over time, right? Which is, I think, what you're saying. And even to a physical basis. And Scott, I wonder, where do you see that kind of evolution of reality changing as virtual space becomes a reality of everyday life? I think all those terms indicate moving towards this interesting shift where the virtual is kind of leaking out into our everyday surroundings. Connecting the digital, the virtual with the physical spaces is just so interesting. There's just so many opportunities there. And I find, you know, I'm, I'm kind of obsessed also with biometrics and, you know, taking all that data and thinking about, you know, what would it mean to have this kind of radical personalization of these spaces and these virtual objects, virtual characters responding to us based on different physiological aspects of where we are at the time. Yeah, I think that's, it's so interesting. I mean, I sequenced my genome recently oh, and wow. And this I recommend for everybody to do because like I got 60 pages back of my code, right? And nice. just like thinking about. So that's like different than 23 and me. That's like. No, actually... so you, so yes, it is different than 23 and me, but you can get the same data from ancestry.com or 23 and me and just actually just have the raw, your raw DNA. I start to think about from there, how, you know, this programming language that, where we can start coding in DNA. And that's what I was thinking about, like with Neuralink and then um, what Scott's saying and this sort of mixed reality, which is makes a lot of sense in the health context, you know, because I also did get to see, it's like, what are my risks? And so using technology for that application is pretty profound. So we're at this point of thinking about this whole new idea of what what's the language of immersive storytelling and, mm -hmm. you know, just trying stuff as Rachel's doing. It takes artists to be in there and trying stuff and breaking stuff to, to move this forward. It's just, it's not about more technology. It's, it's figuring out what kind of experiences we can build. That opens up a lot of interesting opportunities. Great to meet you, Rachel. Oh, well, we'll stay in touch. I'm gonna program your speech bubble. Great, thank you. Hyundai Motor, connecting art and technology.